What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. Hope you're having a great day. I finally got my new 72 volt battery pack delivered. I've been waiting for this thing for almost two weeks. Let's go open it up and do some measurements. Hopefully I don't have to do any modifications to fit it on my MX650. This is everything that came with the package that I got from BTR Power. I went with a 72 volt, 20 amp hour. This is supposed to have a BMS rating of 50 amps. Um, thank God that the charge port is the same exact one that I already installed on my bike from their 48 volt kit. So I don't have to modify my cover. The plugs are also the same, so I don't have to modify the harness. I just have to install this end to the battery and it should be good to go as long as the measurements work out. I'm also happy that it came with this larger 5 amp charger, which is supposed to charge a lot faster than the 3 amp one that came with my 48 volt. So pretty happy with this. This could come really useful for our long rides. Like if we do the same route again, where we go to wineries and breweries, if we stop for an hour, and I plug it up, this would give it a decent amount of charge so I don't have to worry about running out again. I'm gonna take out this 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack uh, so we can compare it with the 72 side by side as far as dimensions and weight differences. Here's a side by side comparison. As far as dimension, you can see that the 72 is clearly larger than the 48. These are both 20 amp hour. Let's start with the 72. It is about 10 inches tall. And as far as the width goes, six by six and a half. And then the 48 volt is about 8.6 inches tall. And the width is about six by five and a half. Let's go weigh both of them. Start with the 72. 72 weighs 25.4 pounds. And 48 weighs 16.2. So we are gonna be adding about nine pounds to the bike, but it's still gonna be significantly less weight than when I had the four SLA batteries in there. And with the power added going 72 volt, it should definitely outweigh the cons. So considering the full length of the bottom tray area being 10 inches, I'm definitely gonna have to uh, bend this rear edge flat to properly fit the battery in place. I honestly don't even know if I can put the cover back on, but I want a 72 volt battery in here regardless. It also looks like we're coming up on a height limitation just because it looks like this tip of the shock is about eight inches from the bottom. Unlike the SX500 where the shock is mounted here, the MX650s and 500s are limited with space in here for a super large battery because of this. Uh, but we should be okay with the battery I chose but I can't imagine you can fit a much larger battery without major modification. I just placed the battery inside one of the side covers and it is such a tease that it is edge to edge perfect as far as length goes, but then you put the other side on and you got about an inch and a half gap. <laughs> so it is definitely too large to have a cover on, but man, if this battery was just a little bit skinnier, it would have been perfectly fit as far as the other dimensions.
I just cut out a template to replicate the shape of the bottom platform. I used three quarter inch, really dense foam. This actually came with my BTR power pack, my 48 volt one, so it kind of came in handy. I'm leaving this little tab up front in case the battery shifts forward. I, I don't want it to hit the frame. And same thing back here. I just wanted to make sure that uh, I can reduce as much vibration as possible because I really don't want to damage this battery in case you're doing like jumps or whatever. It just helps dampen or um, absorb any sort of shock or vibration. Looks like my measurements were a little bit too exact. Six by 10 at the bottom, but at the very top, it does hit the shock. So I'm gonna have to do something about this. What I ended up doing was prying the outer edges outward with a giant pair of pliers just until it's six and a half inches of width because I wanted it to cradle the battery ever so slightly when I fully tighten it down. And then I slipped the zip ties through the original holes that was for the side covers. And then I made sure that these met up at the top corner. So this battery is super secure, not going anywhere. And there's plenty of clearance for the rear shock. I just connected the battery for testing, showing 79.9 volts right out of the box. I haven't hooked it up to the charger yet. I wanna clean up the wiring a little bit more. I also still have to wire up the charge port to the battery and figure out a place for us to put it now that the battery box is gone. I still want it to be accessible with the fairings on. I think it actually looks pretty good without the bottom cover on. I was worried that it was gonna show too much exposed, but luckily the battery just fills in the, the, um, the bottom area and the casing of the BTR battery is like a satin black that matches the plastic. So kind of blends in place. Not too much wiring exposed. I put some of this protector material Try to clean things up as much as possible and here's what i have the uh, charge port so it's easily accessible when when i need to charge it speaking of which we're going to hook this up to the charger and let it charge overnight and we are going to take it out all right guys the mx650 is now fully charged so let's go take this thing out i'm not going to take it out too far today because this is a brand new setup and it's a work day i'm not trying to get stranded 84.1 volts. It is fully charged. Holy shit. Holy shit. The front end just picks up immediately. Definitely got to take it easy on the throttle. Ooh. Torque is a lot. All 
right guys it is wet outside it just rained so i'm not gonna go full blown top speed but i just want to get an idea how fast this thing actually goes so the torque is insane on it The torque is so much. Dang. We're already over 40, 43.1, 44, 45.7. That is dangerous. Right, guys this thing's an absolute torque monster like from a stop when you just throttle a little bit the front end definitely has no trouble lifting i just didn't want to get too crazy with a bike because it is wet outside it just stopped raining maybe like half an hour ago so the streets are fully wet I'm not trying to have a bad day still got work to do this week but as you see it um on the same road going slightly uphill it goes 42.8 miles an hour and then going back it goes like 45.8 miles an hour so uphill downhill doesn't matter it is in the 40s well in the 40s so i would say the new top speed's about 43 44 right now and i still have the um, 11 tooth sprocket in there i don't really feel comfortable with the, uh, swapping in a 13 tooth sprocket yet until i give it some good run time and actually get familiar with the bike and get to know the real, real top speed right now. Cause I am worried about tire expansion since I have very little clearance with my rear tire. I know that um, it slightly rubs against my motor when I'm going in the forties. So I don't want to try to hit 50 or something and have a tire problem. Once it's a little drier outside later on this week, I'm going to ride it more and get a better feel for it. Uh, see what it's actually capable of, see if it can maintain a wheelie for a good amount. I have no doubt that it can, but if you found today's video helpful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you like this kind of content, want to keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to my channel. But this is going to be it for today. Thank you for watching.